making our stimulus response active allowed presentation to match it to a response. However, in order to have the response classified correctly, we need to tell presentation which button is the correct response to the stimulus. We can do this by setting the target button stimulus event property, which one can do from SDL or in PCL using the stimulus event set target button method. When a target button is set, we say that the stimulus event is a target, which makes it automatically response active. Recall that in our experiment, the idea is for participants to press the left button when the box color is red and the right button when the box color is blue, regardless of position of the box. The value in the color position in our trial list array is the index into our array of boxes, colored boxes. When you set the target button to a number, that number specifies the index of the button in the list of active buttons we set up on the response panel. Therefore, if we order our list of active buttons appropriately to correspond to the order of boxes in the colored boxes array, we can use this same value to set the target button. Looking at this array, we see that the red box is first. Looking at the response settings, we can verify that the first button is the left button. Now we can add a line that updates the target button before each time we present the trial. Since setting a target button for a stimulus event automatically makes that stimulus response active, we can also remove the SDL that explicitly sets the stimulus event response active. We can also set the event time back to something smaller and remove the fixation event code as we are not particularly interested in that at the moment. Finally, we can include a window we haven't used before, the parameter window, which will give us some quick information about accuracy after the run. Now, after the run, take a look at the parameter window. The number of hits, misses, and so on will be shown. Because the trial does not end until a response is made, and all active stimuli have a target button, misses and false alarms are not relevant here. Every stimulus must be responded to, so there cannot be a miss. None of the stimuli are set specifically to not be responded to, so there cannot be a false alarm. For more information on exactly how stimulus response pairs are classified, see the documentation. We can look at the analyzer window to see the details of what happened in each trial. We will customize what the analyzer does for us in a future lesson. For right now, we will just go over the information available by default. The text editor at the top is displaying a file, experiment1.sdf. This file contains instructions for the analyzer. In the future, we will customize it for this experiment. On the left, we see a list of event sets. Each event set contains a list of logged events that occurred during the scenario. The set named All contains all such logged events. This list of events is the basic data also saved to the log file for each scenario. Note that log files will only be saved when you run a scenario from the main tab. When a scenario is run from the editor tab, log files will not be saved. The other event sets created here are subsets of the All set, such as the set of picture stimuli, or the set of responses. The data columns displayed for each set on the right are determined by the event table being used. Looking at the top left, we are viewing the columns for the default event table, which is the only event table available by default. Below the event sets, we also see a list of event pair sets. 
Each event pair set contains a list of pairs of events that have been associated with one another. The event pair set RM all contains all of the stimulus response pairs that have been matched by the presentation response matching feature we are using. The RM stands for response matching. When viewing this set it is convenient to use the columns specified by the default RM table event pair table. Each row contains information about a stimulus response pair. For example, code 1 and code 2 contain the event codes for the two events. The column time diff is the time difference between the events, which in this case is the reaction time. We can see in the RM type column how each pair has been classified. The other event pair sets shown here are subsets of the set RM all. For example, the set RM hit contains all pairs for which the response matched the target button set for the stimulus. The set RM incorrect contains all pairs where the stimulus was a target but the response was not the target button. In addition to allowing you to easily view the data, the analyzer can produce an output file containing data formatted the way you specify. So in general, for each scenario run from the main tab, presentation will save a log file and the analyzer will optionally save an additional file. The current analyzer file, experiment1.sdf, does not produce such a file. Finally, we note that you can control what goes into the log file on the log files panel of the settings tab. The general events list is a list of all logged events which corresponds to the all set displayed in the analyzer. In general, you should always have this selected. You may also include the stimulus list which is a list of stimuli with any matched responses similar to the RM or event pair set in the analyzer. However, if you are using the analyzer features to write an additional output file as we will do for this experiment, including this table is usually unnecessary.